Where do our words come from? We notice that quite a few science words come from either Latin or Greek. But what about the words that we use every day? The ones we use over and over. Where do they come from? We decided to collect some data and find out. So we each thought of a sentence. And we each thought of a sentence. And we each thought of a sentence. Then we looked at Adam Online to find out what language each word came from. Adam Online is where we look when we want to know history of a word. It's our favorite! Then we wrote our sentence on big white paper. So we can show our findings on a bulletin board. We color coded the language of origin. So we could see at a glance the most common ancestors of the words in our sentences. We began sharing our sentences with the rest of the class. We let classmates guess before we revealed the language of origin. We didn't share them all. But we shared enough of the sentences that we were able to see that most of the words we were using were from Old English. We live, we live in, in the Milky, Milky Way, which is in the universe. What's interesting that you're noticing? That universe is Ah, um, part of that word we've looked at before when we looked at um, monomers and polymers and then we looked at the Latin version of M-O-N. M-O-N-E is Greek meaning one and we looked at the Latin version of that which is U-N-E meaning one. This, this word universe is putting U-N-E plus an I connecting vowel plus V-E-R-S-E -E, meaning to turn. So the universe is one turning. We're all turning as one. All the planets, everything, right? So that one is Latin. That's a cool one. Addison. I think it's kind of cool how they spelt it in English, which I think it's kind of cool how it looks. Right. And what do we notice? What's happened in modern English with that spelling? They put the W and the H. Exactly. Exactly. That is so interesting that the H has always been there. Yeah. It just used to be first and when it was first it was no doubt pronounced. And after the I, is that an L? I believe so. Why would there be an L if you did? Because we I, don't even, right. like we don't even hear an L. So uh, this is pretty cool. It makes us wonder. It makes us want to go do more research on that word, find out more answers. We have very little information here. We have basics, but yeah, we might be interested in finding out more. I actually kind of f figured that universe would be Latin because, like we said, it's usually more like scientific words that are kind of Latin, and universe is a little bit scientific. Like It is. Like, there's a lot of scientists that try to figure out the secrets of the universe. Exactly. I love animals so very much because they are so cute, amazing, awesome, and sweet. Does anybody know what I comes from? Um, Natalie. Old English? Yeah. So what do you notice about this or find interesting or wonder about Addison? This is a question, but it's a little off topic. Can, like, exclamation points and question marks like, where do all those things come from? That is a really, really cool question. Um, and one I would like to explore at another time, but yes, they come from somewhere too. They have histories too, and why we use them the way we do. That is excellent topic. We're going to have to look at that. Thank you for bringing that up. Why is they spelt like there? Isn't that interesting? It is, isn't it? Maybe those two are related. Maybe you just pronounce it some. Maybe it was in like Scandinavian, that. but it really has okay. closer ties to Old English. So you said like jump, but then you add ing like jump ing, would it still be the same? Yes, it would still be because the base. We're looking at where the base comes from. Okay. How many of you found that you had to remove a suffix in order to find out where the base was from, where the word was from? Milky. Yeah, Milky. right. Milky, you had to remove the y. Amazing, remove the ing. Amara. Mm -hmm. Except they had a T at the end. Do you think that it would be spelled a whole different way? I just think that. Right. There's an awful lot of words we could actually kind of recognize yeah. by the spelling. Casey? Um, I think it's really cool that A was spelled like Anne, and Anne was just spelled like 
was and Anne was built the same way as it is in the mm -hmm. second. We were noticing that last yeah, um, the first. Yeah, yeah, but we we're no yeah that it's an article. It's a determiner, and the full form is a n, and the short form is a. But remember how you can say um, an orange or a house, an apple. right? Because you use one of those two articles, and so here we have them both. But in Old English, probably spelled the same all the time. Mm. Tessa, I think it's kind of like it's, it's kind of weird how a on and and have the same old English spelling. <laughs> that is pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Lauren. Um, I was gonna say first of all, I thought it would be like. E-S mm. instead of I-S like it's normally spelled and I think it's just quite a coincidence that everything else again um, except American is Old English. Isn't that interesting? Wouldn't have expected that many words. Carter was been really Were you surprised nice. yourself when you were doing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there a specific word you thought for sure came from another language besides Old English? Mm, I thought legend or master would come from somewhere else. But yeah, Noah? Um, so is, in, and, and team are all the same spelling as they are now. And part of and hasn't changed, but another part of it has. Well, there's two different spellings there, yeah. O-N-D and A-N-D. Do you notice how those words are words we use constantly? Those are those little words. Those are function words, T-O and A-N-D. We use those all the time, and the pronoun I, right? We use those all the time, and they have not changed a whole lot. What do you think of eat when you oh, look at the old English? Eat, like eat. Right, and we're, yeah, you did find it under eat, didn't you? Yeah. I had some students doing sentences where they had the word eight, and they couldn't find it under A-T-E. And I said, well, that's the past tense for what? And then they had to look under eat and find this. In the Normandy invasion of 1066, when the French oh. took over and lived in the castles and were the government, all that, they introduced a lot of words. They were eating the beef and they used a French word beef but the people who were raising the cows in the field were old English people and they used the old English word cow so what about pork pork is the meat pig. what is the word the animal pig. pig and guess where that's from old English. it is from old English so the animals that were being raised by the people who were Old English were using Old English words to name them. <coughs> yep. What about mutton? Is that mutton. French? That's a really good English question. Word? I don't know mutton. Because it's sheep. Yes. Right. Fancy sheep. Um, let's look that one up. I wonder if that would be French. Kind of feels like it they could be, be. Yeah. but I'd want to double check on that one. They a sheep. Yes. Mm -hmm. They still eat you. Oh, yeah. yeah I still. had a mutton stick from Slam.
While we were ready to compile our data, we had collected 49 sentences, which were made up of 354 words. This is a pie chart that shows our findings. This is a bar graph that shows the same information. It sure is yeah, obvious that most of the words we use are from Germanic languages. Isn't it? The rest were either from Latin or from the Romance languages that are derived from Latin. Here's a breakdown of those Germanic languages. Out of 354 words, 280 of them were from Old English. That's 80%. Here's a breakdown of the number of words from Latin and the Romance languages. Out of the 354 words we used in the 49 sentences, 22 were from Latin. That's 6%. There are 23 words from French. That's 6% too. This was a pretty interesting study to do. We began by looking at the words in our sentences. When we realized how many were from Old English, we knew we needed to find out more information about Old English. We learned about the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes. We learned about the raids from the Vikings. We learned about the Anglo-Saxon people and how their life changed with the Norman invasion of 1066. We learned how Old English, Middle English, and Early Modern English sounded different from each other. Yet they were all cool. We even learned to speak a few sentences in Old English. Echarta Jude. Ela Jude, Echarta Daniel. Cool, huh? Have you ever wondered why the words what and who have an H spelling in them? We sure don't pronounce it. When we found out those words were from Old English. We also found out the H used to come before the W. Yeah, and H was pronounced. The modern day what was pronounced what. And the modern word who was pronounced what. When we started this project, we didn't know much of anything about Old English. Now we look forward to learning more. Hey,